Am I the a-hole stories? Am I the a-hole for telling my mom that I wish my stepmom was my biological mom? I'm an 18-year-old guy. My dad and stepmom were together when they were in their 20s. They broke up and only about a year after that, my dad got my mom pregnant. He has admitted to me that he wasn't in love with my mom and only married her out of duty. Their marriage was never a happy one and I remember that they fought almost daily. Seven years later, my dad met my stepmom again and they realized they still loved each other. They got together again and my dad divorced my mom. Yes, he left my mom for another woman, I don't blame him one bit. Not only did he and my mom have a terrible marriage, my mom was often emotionally abusive to me too. My stepmom on the other hand is a wonderful person, who has been more of a mom to me than my bio mom. At 14, I moved in with her and dad and we're really close. She has no kids as she never wanted them, but she and my dad are very happy together. My mom did not like this one bit. What she hated even more than me moving out, was how close I am to stepmom. She would often start drama and try to provoke stepmom into altercations. But stepmom never sank to her levels and always dealt with her with grace. Now stepmom is really beautiful and in great shape. She's 47 but looks 30, and often wears clothes that can be called sexy. My mom has often used this to attack her and call her a slut. Yesterday, me, my dad and stepmom were by the pool. I was making burgers and stepmom was in a bikini and sitting on dad's lap. That's when my mom decided to drop in unannounced. She often does this. She called out to me, and when she reached the pool she saw stepmom in a bikini and on my dad's lap with his arms around her. Mom flew into a rage and called her a hoe for parading naked in front of me. My dad told her to calm the hell down, and they could do what they wanted in their home. I was livid by the way my mom was attacking stepmom and jumped in to defend her. Mom now directed her attack at me. She screamed, you're on this W side? You left me for her just like your father. I shot back, well, I wish she was the one who had given birth to me so we wouldn't have you in our lives. Mom began to cry and left soon after. Later. Stepmom thanked me for defending her, and she and dad said they understood why I said that. But it was still a cruel thing to say. They think I should apologize. I however don't think I did anything wrong. My mom had it coming. So, am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. If your bio mom wants the title, she has to do the job to earn it. You could have had three loving parents, but unfortunately your mother has decided that's not going to happen. As the happy product of a successfully blended family, I can assure you that it has nothing to do with genetics and everything to do with effort. Your family are the ones who join you in putting the effort in, the rest are not. Walk away with a clear conscience. I don't think that OP's bio mom is his mom, even though she gave birth to him. Like you said, it doesn't have anything to do with genetics and it's a title that needs to be earned. I don't think anyone's bio mom is their real mom until they earn it. Jesus bro, chill. You father and your stepmother were handling it. Not the a-hole, but chill lol. I know, I'm just so sick of my mom acting this way. Not the a-hole your bio mom is abusive to you, her actions have consequences. Unnecessarily cruel is not correct to place on your shoulders, she has been maliciously behaving for years, screaming at you and caused drama. She's been playing a stupid game and now she won her stupid prize. Harsh but not the a-hole. But if you're a legal adult, why is she coming by your dad's house? Announced or unannounced? That seems like some serious boundaries being crossed. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for getting pissed at my husband for sharing his and our child's inheritance with his sister? My, female 36, husband, male 38, and I both work full-time and have a two-year-old little girl. Our hours are both long, mother-in-law is old and my own parents live in another country. So we have temporary live in hired help to take care of our little girl, daycares are closed where we are. We follow strict COVID rules and keep a very small social bubble. While not well off, we are comfortable. Hubs has a younger sister, female 36, who hasn't worked for years. No physical or other disabilities, she'd explained to me before that she loves freedom too much to waste away in an office, whereas her brother and I slave away in an office, but I digress. Mother-in-law and Hubs support her financially and she also has a property to rent out. Recently, Hubs and our little girl were both granted an equal inheritance from mother-in-law's sister. She disliked sister-in-law and left her with nothing. Sister-in-law complained that it wasn't fair, and asked Hubs to give her two-thirds in value of what he and my little girl got, with some weirdo logic on how a little girl didn't need anything, and how Hubs and I are together better off than she is, 
given we can afford the luxury of expensive hired help. Also, as sister-in-law is on the rocks with her boyfriend, she also has to shell out extra money for renting a place to live. Hubs agreed, before telling me. I found myself flipping my crap and telling him that he can spoil sister-in-law rotten, but he has no business giving away my little girl stuff. So, this is where I might be the a-hole, Hubs cried after I raged. He said he didn't want to be greedy, and that our little girl obviously won't need college funds for a long time, so we'd be able to save up enough for her if we both continue working full time. Then I got even more pissed, big mistake, asked him why a parasite matters more to him to his own baby girl. He cried even more and just went for a walk to calm down and now I feel like the worst wife in the world. I'd never made him cry before. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Why is your husband financially supporting his sister who has no reason not to work other than not wanting to? I would have lost my cool too. Why should you have to bust your butt to save up for a college fund, just so his sister can throw a tanty for money that she's not entitled to? I would have lost my cool a long time ago if my partner was supporting a lazy adult who just didn't feel like working. Maybe if I already had enough money to pay for kiddo college and a full retirement fund it would be okay, but he is literally stealing from his wife and child to give his sister a life of leisure, while not doing the same for his wife or himself. Not the a-hole, it was your daughter's inheritance, that means that your husband has no right to give away her money. It's mother-in-law's money and she can give it to whoever she wants. Not the a-hole, and it is still legally your daughter's money. It was left in trust to her. Husband must replace the money, as well as any interest it may have earned. He stole from his own daughter. He needs to understand that that is what he has done. Not the a-hole, so he can do what he wants with his part of the inheritance. Assuming that you both keep separate finances, or have agreed previously that it was his money in some way. But he should never have touched your daughter's portion without consulting you. Parenting is a two-player game, not one, and he now needs to find a way to either take it back or replace the value. Update, Hubs and I have reconciled. Basically, he told me that since sister-in-law's boyfriend will likely go back to his wife now, he's worried she'll not find someone to take care of her since she's on the wrong side of 35, so he wants to make sure she would have enough to live on when he and mother-in-law are gone. He apologized for the inheritance sharing thing. He says that he knew that auntie didn't want anything to go to sister-in-law and he tried not to think of that, but her fight made him reevaluate his responsibilities to family, including auntie. So he'll have a talk with sister-in-law to let her know his decision. We still have problems to work out, but we'll take those forward by being more open with each other about our feelings. Thanks for all the comments and advice. Next story is titled. Am I the a-hole for not fostering my niece's siblings? I am currently the legal guardian of my two nieces, Mandy, female 17, and Steph, female 15. Their father, my brother, died before Steph was born. Their mother is currently in jail and will be for the next 10 to 15 years. Going from being childless to being the parent of two teenage girls, has been a pretty big adjustment for all of us, but we are in a pretty good place right now. The girls are doing well in school and they are making friends. The girls have three half-siblings, same mom, different dad, ranging in age from 4 to 11. Those kids were being looked after by their father's aunt, let's call her Aunt May. The girls saw their siblings every 2 to 3 weeks, and they FaceTime in between. I don't want the girls to lose touch with their siblings, something that Aunt May agreed with, as did the therapist we are seeing. Aunt May had a stroke 3 weeks ago. The kids are currently being looked after by a family friend of Aunt May's, but she won't take the kids long term. The prognosis on Aunt May isn't good. The kids are going to be sent into foster care. Mandy and Steph are understandably upset about what is going on. They asked me if I would take their siblings in. I told them no. Now they are both angry at me. Mandy has stated that she will become their guardian when she turns 18 in 7 months. I've told her that it would be a mistake, how would she go to high school and then college, work, and raise 3 kids at her age. She told me she wouldn't go to college and she'll use her school money. I told her that she doesn't have school money. I have money that I set aside for her to go to school, but it doesn't belong to her. I will happily help pay for her to go to school. I won't pay for her to raise her siblings. Now she's mad about that as well. I don't blame the girls for being upset. They love their siblings. But I'm not going to take the kids in. I turned my life upside down a year ago when I took in the girls. I knew when I took in Mandy and Steph that I was signing up for being a parent for a minimum of 5 years. I promised myself I would do the best I could to get them through school and into happy adult lives. 
I'm not willing to do that for another 14 years for kids that aren't my family. I'm not willing to try to parent a 4 year old, that is totally different than taking in a 14 year old. I know that those three kids are Mandy's and Steph's family. That when those kids go into foster care, there is a pretty good chance they might lose contact. I've told them both that I would do what I can to help them maintain that contact, but I couldn't promise them anything. I feel bad about the whole situation. I know my nieces think I am an unfeeling jerk. And I feel bad for the three kids that are going to be put in the system, but I am not willing to spend 14 years being a parent to them. Am I the a-hole for not helping my niece's siblings? Now for the top comments. You are a goddamn hero for becoming an involuntary parent, and not the a-hole. This is a desperately sad and challenging situation. Your niece's hurt feelings are understandable. But there is no moral duty on you to take in many more and much younger children. None whatsoever. To add to this, OP is there any way to get the girls into therapy, if they aren't already? Having a neutral third party may help them process everything that has happened, and the changes to come. Good luck OP, you're amazing for taking on a parental role for those girls. Getting everyone into therapy, myself included, was one of the first things I did when the girls came to live with me. No a-holes here, this is pretty crazy and a crappy situation. Adding three more kids to your life at once is super difficult, and I'm sure finances would be tight. It's very sweet of Mandy to want to raise her siblings, even if it means putting her life on hold, but whatever money you set aside for school will eventually run out. It just doesn't seem like a feasible idea. Financially I could do it, that isn't the issue. It's the having to be a parent for 14 years to three more kids that is stopping me. Not the a-hole. It's sad but you have a life of your own to live which you put off or at least pause for a while for Mandy and Steph. She can become a guardian if she wants but she needs to find somewhere to live because CPS will not let them live with her if she doesn't have a full-time stable job, a house with rooms for each of them, or at least for each sex if there is a boy and girl, and accommodations for them. Like which school they will go to, what therapist they will be seeing for their grief and all that. She isn't thinking about it from a logical standpoint. It's not realistic. You are not the a-hole. Mandy will not be allowed to take the kids in when she is 18. She won't graduate until she is 19. Both her and Steph were held back a year in school, their mom didn't make them go to school. There is no way that CPS would let a high school student become the legal guardian of three kids. That is not even thinking about the items you brought up. The last story is titled. Am I the a-hole for wanting to save more money for my future child than my stepson? Me, male 31, and my girlfriend, female 24 have a great relationship, she has a son, male 6, from a previous relationship. We have been together for 5 years and lived together for 4. Her son lives with us full time, I have a great relationship with her son, and I do all the fatherly activities and support him as if he was my own, as his bio father, male 33, is a deadbeat. Bio father does not pay support and will probably never contribute financially towards his son. 3 years ago. I told my girlfriend that she should start saving some money for her son's future. She does not make a lot of money so I told her she can take some money from our checking account, I pay 80%, her 20% into this account each month, each month and set this aside for his future, and hopefully when he is older he will have 30 to 50 thousand US dollars to give him a good start in life as an adult. She never did this, even though I told her many times to do so. Now girlfriend is pregnant and I plan to set up accounts for both her child and the one we will be having together and put aside an equal amount of money each month that they will be given when they are ready to start their adult lives. Girlfriend thinks this was a great idea, and said we would have to compensate her son for the 6 years of savings that he did not get previous to her getting pregnant with our mutual child. I said no, she had years to start saving money for him and chose not to do so. I will not be making a larger contribution to any of the kids, even if that means my bio child will have a more savings when becoming an adult. Am I the a-hole for standing firm on this as she had years to save money from our mutual account but chose not to do so? Info, we live in a country with pretty much free everything. This is important because most people don't save for their kids at all. Anything we save for the kids would be used for a down payment for a first home or something else expensive young adults want but don't need, like an arts degree abroad. Not the a-hole. You're setting up accounts for both children where the same amount of money will be deposited. That's fair and not favoring one child over the other, which is admirable. You also gave her the option to do it for her son out of your joint bank account and she chose not to. That's on her. I'm sorry, 
but I just can't get past the ages plus timeline. 18 year old girl gets pregnant by her 27 year old boyfriend. They eventually break up and she becomes involved with a guy 7 years older when she's at least 21. I mean it's all legal, but I'm cringing, especially at everyone's shock that the girlfriend maybe hasn't been the most mature person making the best financial choices. So rather than rule on the situation, I'm just going to say I hope the girlfriend is seen and continues to see a therapist. You misread it. She was 19 when OP started dating her. They've been together 5 years and she's 24. I'm not one to judge age differences, but this one is getting some side eye. When I first read the heading I thought for sure you'd be the a-hole. But in truth, after reading your situation, you surprised me. You gave your girlfriend every opportunity to save her the first child. You are absolutely not the a-hole and they are blessed to have you. I agree 100%. OP your girlfriend should be grateful, she had a child with a deadbeat dad and you have supported her and done the right thing. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.